Hey guys, it's a beautiful evening. We're in Southern California, checking out the Pedego Elevate. This is a full suspension electric mountain bike, class one, meaning no throttle. It's pedal assist up to 20 miles per hour and it's legal here on a lot of the trails. Absolutely. Uh, and that's fantastic. This is Paul, he's like head of product at Pedego. Spent a bunch of time and energy designing this over the past couple of years and we've been talking about it for a while, right? Uh, actually official development began in August of 17. Oh my gosh. We were doing some discovery, so maybe that's what we were talking about that. You've done a great job, like pulling everything together. You know, you're paying a little bit more for this thing. Uh, 54 95 Yep. Pedego has the two year comprehensive warranty. They've got dealers all over the United States and globally now, which is pretty cool. And I think they're best known for like their hub motor cruisers and kind of the beach aesthetic. Uh, it, you had the Ridge Rider. It was like a hard tail hub motor powered electric mountain bike. We did with the throttle. With the throttle. And, and it, some people want that. I mean, that's nice. Oh, it, it's incredibly successful, but we wanted to branch out a little bit more. A true, like this, this thing, it commands respect. Um, it, I'm just going to jump into some of the specs and go through what I noticed. Uh, you know, I do all the studies and stuff. There are two frame sizes, which is neat because people come in different body types. There's 18.25, I measured the seat tube, and then a 19. So we have both of those out here. This is the medium, and we got a large over here with like some custom, like notice the pedals and a couple things are a little bit different. That's your bike, right, Paul? Yeah, that's my bike. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, that's the bike Paul chooses personally, which I think is, it speaks to the bike. Uh, of course, I love the battery integration, really low, keeps weight low and center on the bike. Um, the Shimano motor, this thing is really compact, relatively lightweight. It's like six and a half pounds compared to uh, Bosch and some of the other leaders in the space where it's like eight or even nine pounds. It puts out a lot of power. This is up to 70 Newton meters of torque, 250 to 500 watts output. Um, and it's also using a standard sort of a chain ring here. It's, it's not like a tiny one with a reduction gearing or anything. And I love that they've got narrow wide tooth pattern on this. So it actually grabs the chain really well in addition to that plastic chain retention guide kind of thing. It says your chain is not gonna flop off when you're riding this. It's not gonna chip the frame up because you got that nice rubber slap guard. And then back here we have an 11 sprocket Shimano SLX derailleur. 11 to 42 teeth. So that really big sprocket in the back that's going to be excellent for climbing and then i think it's a 34 tooth chain ring up front i do have all the specs and everything on this bike back at this side if you want to compare back to back but there are a lot of little things here like this one-way clutch i have it engaged right now so it it adds a little bit of tension to the spring and the derailleur and that's perfect for if you're riding off road and you've got some bounce going on if you need to change a flat however you can it kind of position this gray lever into the down position. I'm going to try to do this real quick. There we go. And then it reduces the tension in that spring, makes it easier to, you know, fix the fix the tire, uh, change a tube. We are running tubeless right now. It comes tubeless ready and quick release front and rear. This is running boost hub spacing. So 148 millimeters in the rear and that 12 millimeter through axle just gives you a lot of stiffness and a better bracing angle on these spokes. 32 hole, 14 gauge standard. Love the black spokes and we've got nice hubs that are black, rims that are black, bigger tires. So these are 27.5 by 2.8 plus size uh, Maxxis. And the rims, the rims too are uh, kind of a call out here. Alex rims, these are a uh, 45 millimeter width. So a little bit wider, they support the plus sizing and give you like a flatter surface area for more grip and float, which is nice if the terrain is a little bit softer uh, and just with the added weight. In my opinion, this bike, is pretty lightweight for being a full suspension electric mountain bike. It's 51.1 pounds. I weighed it earlier. The battery pack is 5.8 pounds. You can always take that off if you're loading this onto your car, something like that. That's a good way to go. And again, the, the, the weight is really centered compared to the hub motor powered bikes that Pedego offers on their other lines. You don't have any unsprung weight, extra weight in the wheels. The wheels themselves are relatively lightweight and that allows the suspension to actuate really smoothly. I would classify this as maybe a trail or all mountain type of bike. The front suspension is 140 millimeters of travel. X-Fusion McQueen, I love the anodized black stanchions. Like 140 millimeters travel, that's, that's pretty good. And I think sometimes you can put tokens in and you can do some adjustments. It has compression adjust with a lockout right there. And then we have rebound adjust at the bottom. Um, these are 34 millimeter stanchions too, so they're a little bit thicker. So coming back to the boost hub spacing, instead of 100 millimeters, this is 110. Gives you that good bracing angle, supports the bigger tires. 15 millimeter through axle, it's a maxle, so it threads right in. Again, quick release, both of those wheels. So when you're out and about, if you need to do some trail maintenance, it's pretty easy. 
tapered head tube. Of course, that's what you'd expect with nicer hardware. One thing that really stood out to me compared to some of the other high-end electric mountain bikes is that this has 203 millimeter hydraulic disc brakes front and rear. And that's, that's awesome. Two finger Shimano Dior levers. You can use one finger if you want because they've given you tons of uh, mechanical advantage and cooling capability with those nice big rotors. Front and rear, a lot of times it's just 203 up front. So I don't, to me, that's, that's kind of a neat thing. I also love the pedals. They've gone with a lot of race face components. So this is called the Chester. It's sort of a plastic with adjustable height pins. So you can raise or lower those depending on the terrain that you're, you're riding in. Relatively short stem kind of brings you back and up a little bit for descents. So you're not leaning super far forward as you might be with a trail bike. It's flat, it's like a zero degree rise. I think this is 50 millimeter and then 780 millimeters on the race face bar with just a slight rise to that. Maybe a little bit of a sweep back, locking grips, Pedego branded, but I think these are Velo and I like the little maze uh, pattern that's going on. And then we have a Volt saddle from WTB and then a kind shock with 125 millimeters of adjustment. A 30.9 millimeters on that seat post and there's some, some room to raise it. You'll notice that I have it in a really high position because I have a 31 inch inseam. I, I really like to get full leg extension. With the dropper, you could be climbing in that up position and just really getting you know efficient pedaling. And then on the way down, you can drop and you can use your knees and your legs to sort of like absorb the shock like this in addition to the suspension. So the rear suspension is 130 instead of 140. It's also an air suspension. It also has the black anodized stanchion. This is Debon Air Monarch Rock Shocks. It also has compression and uh, rebound. So plenty of adjustability all across this bike. I was talking to Paul about the suspension design. I believe this is four bar horse link. Okay, so we have a pivot point right back here. It's not just like rainbowing up and down. The whole thing travels in a more vertical position and that gives you better braking control and a little bit less bob if you're climbing, especially if you up the, the compression and maybe you know lock that out or improve the, the compression up front as well. Integrated cabling throughout, custom frame so that the battery is sort of sunk in a little bit. You can see it's stepped down and that just makes it blend in. I like that the black colors here help the wires to blend in, the black suspension, everything, everything kind of it, it melds together. It doesn't look messy. It doesn't look slapped on at all. It's it's very integrated. Uh, and you can see that there's like a matte finish here with a little bit of gloss and then there's some some sparkles and stuff. Yeah, you know, they have the, the Pedego branding, but it's a little bit meaner. It's a little bit more, uh, I, I don't know, in some ways, it's minimalist. It's not shouting. A lot of the other Pedego products are like bright colors, fun, yeah, beach definitely. riding. <laughs> yeah. This is definitely still fun though. <laughs> it is, it, but it's it's serious. You know, I don't know, for me as, we're, we're kind of like blurring the lines here, right? You, you wouldn't see a beach cruiser out on this trail. And in some ways, if you guys made this bike look like a beach cruiser, I don't think people would take it as serious. Yeah, it might, it might be a little bit different. Um, I definitely they got free, free reign on this one. And I, I love minimalism. Look at the way he's yeah. dressed, right? Black now, <laughs> no like wonder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I applaud you. I think that's a, that was a really good choice. Even, even thing, little things like look at the, um, the labeling and the branding on the tires versus on this one, this was like maybe pre-production or something and he has the yellow. So the, l attention to detail for sure on, on the look and the aesthetic of this bike. I really appreciate that. Um, and just protecting it back to that slap guard. The Shimano E8000 motor is measuring your rear wheel speed with that magnet and the sensor, pedal cadence and pedal torque. It's very dynamic. So as you pedal this thing, it's going to respond quickly. It, it's relatively quiet, but you can hear it winding when it's a, a little bit higher RPM. And I think one of the reasons they might have chosen this one is because it's so light, but also the standard Q factor, it's a little bit narrower. And then you've got the shorter chain stay length here just because of where the, the bottom bracket is. And you can see this is like, I think the Holotech from Shimano. So it's relatively lightweight, got the nice metal skid plate on the front, um, higher ground clearance. So you aren't gonna bump into rocks. You can see the chain ring even hangs below the motor casing. And that's really nice. A lot of the Bosch powered bikes, they have the motor sort of angled and, and built into the frame. This one just, there's less stuff, it's smaller, uh, which, which I start to appreciate. Do you have anything else to say about 
just the motor or you know decisions you made when you were specking this uh we tried uh, a handful of different motors out when we were doing discovery and uh we absolutely fell in love with this all the guys on the team absolutely love the shimano e8000 it rides well the on-demand power is excellent uh accelerates very uh very rapidly and um it's just a blast to ride okay. all around yeah very cool i appreciate hearing that since We've got, you know, a little bit of space and, and some beautiful weather here. We're going to go riding, but before we do that, I want to call out the accessories. This is a shock pump, so you could dial in the kind of sag it is what it's called, where you, you get the suspension set up for your body weight. I'm relatively lightweight, so it's set up for me right now. This is the charger. This is one of the areas where Shimano in the past, it was kind of, kind of tough because you couldn't charge the battery on the bike. You had to take it off. They've improved that now and they've got this little plug. It's the same plug whether the battery's on or off the bike. You don't have to have an adapter that could get lost. I think this charger is still a little bit big and kind of heavy. It's like 2.1 pounds, but it does put out four amps. So that means it's faster. A lot of electric bike chargers only put out two amps. So that means you have to wait longer between rides. The battery pack itself offers 36 volts, 14 amp hours of capacity for 504 watt hours total. Um, here it is on the bike. That's actually the on off switch. When we go to experiment with the display later, we'll see that. This is the charging port cover. See, it's just nicely seated there. There's the plug. Again, same plug, whether it's on or off the bike. It seems to seat in pretty nicely. Offers good dust and water protection. It is a little bit close to the crank arms, like as we bring that, but but not overlapping. A lot of electric bikes, they have the charging plug like down here, and that's just a recipe for disaster in my opinion, because you know this bike, it's a true mountain bike. There's no kickstand or anything. We just use a stick. And if the bike starts to fall or someone trips over the cable, you don't want this thing to go down and scratch your car or, or get dinged up. It's just such a, a beautiful product. So I appreciate just the little details that that, that port is, is not directly in the way of that crank arm. Here's the uh, key slot, the locking cylinder, Abus keys. Go ahead and insert like this. There we go. You'll notice that it's kind of spring loaded, so it springs back into place twist it and then you tip out the battery like this so it slides out to the side and then very carefully just lift it out this is what it looks like and there's a little bit of a yeah kind of a pivot point at the bottom 5.8 pounds that's not too not too bad 36 volt 14 amp hours little metal plate in there I don't know I think it's kind of cute so let's go ahead and just get this thing back on set it there and then clicks in you you really don't even have to have the keys in I, I love that the the battery pack design is really really good shimano's done a great job with that when you're ready to ride and you just press the power button down here and then the display comes on it gives you this nice but sometimes annoying beep and then you've got a really simple readout so five little bars that gives you some idea of how full the battery is and it's the same same thing down here and they're green in color 20 percent increments speed in the middle it's in miles per hour right now and then the different levels of assist so over here on the left we have what looks like trigger shifters to shift the bike but that's not the case this is a one by setup the only actual physical shifters are right here on the right so again shimano slx i love that there's two ways on the high gear and then multi-step three steps on the low gears and on the left when you press these triggers it takes you to different levels of assist so we go from off to eco to trail and boost and boost is the high so when you get there if you press it again it's like nope already made it all the way up if you want to experiment with different readouts you have to press this little tiny circular button down here and that's the one complaint it's like everything else is within reach this is the seat post dropper lever these are the assist level changers the trigger shifters the brakes everything else is is pretty easy to reach but you have to kind of take your hand off down here and it's small you can imagine if you had gloves on or something so we just changed it to uh, the odometer here we go trip distance range range is really cool because it's dynamic so we're in boost mode right now i'm going to hit the the big lever on the left and go down to trail 33 miles or eco 45 miles so there's there's quite a lot of range in this thing maybe up to 60 miles depending on how you ride how much you weigh the wind these are bigger tires a little bit more drag but you get the comfort and the traction that we were talking about so from range we'll go to time uh, average speed max speed cadence cadence is really cool so as you're pedaling you can you can get some sense of like how quickly you're pedaling 
and then remember this goes up to 120 rpm so if you're pedaling at a higher rpm higher cadence the motor's really not going to support you and in fact you would need to shift gears to hit the higher speed if you're under 20 miles per hour so there is a little bit more it's it's kind of like a manual transmission in that sense and then clock and then we're back to miles per hour if you want you can hold that little button and get into settings and you can adjust some more things and then there's the shimano e-tube app so you have like a smartphone you can put that in your pocket and then pull it out and you can actually adjust some of the settings so do you want the trail or the turbo modes to give you even more boost or less or whatever you can really dial that in um, i think that's kind of neat I didn't want to get too into that. There's there's like a million features, and I'm not sure I would have my phone mounted to the handlebar on a mountain bike. So it's cool that you can adjust it and then just toss it in your bag, and that most of the readouts are right there. One thing I would like to see from Shimano is like a percentage. That That's a little bit more helpful than just, you know, five ticks, and you're kind of guessing. What does one tick mean? Are you at 20%? Are you at 0%? I don't know, but the range thing, that really does help because it's a little bit more precise. Also, with these battery packs, I would take them off before I loaded it on my car or lifted it just to save some weight. I'd also store it in like a cool dry location because extreme heat and extreme cold can be hard on lithium ion cells. You don't want to drop that thing. And in fact, I try to avoid letting it charge below 20%. I just think it stresses the cells if they're getting really empty, it changes the chemistry. So I top mine off every once in a while. It's not the kind of charger that I would probably throw in my backpack, but I mean, where are you going to charge out here anyway, right? So the fact that this thing can get 50, 60 miles, maybe you start out in turbo mode and you're like, oh, okay, we're, we're starting to run out of juice. And then you can sort of step it back using the, the range. Um, one of the other things with that beep, you can turn the beep off in the settings menu, which I really appreciate. Paul, do you have anything else to add? You did a really good job. Woohoo! High five, buddy. <laughs> I'm excited about these bikes. I mean, this is my style of bike. I, uh, I have a sensitive knee, but I'm a sporty guy. I like to get out there and go off the curves and stuff. Even if I'm not actually mountain biking, this is just, this is my type of bike riding around town and having assist is um, just because there is a little bit of extra weight and then, you know, it is a breezy day. So it's nice to have, have some support. Absolutely. Okay, guys, I thought I'd start out just riding the bike and give you some idea of how the cockpit looks and pedaling what it sounds like up here because later i'm going to put the camera on the frame and it's going to sound a little bit more noisy because of the frame vibration so i'm in the highest level here that's boost i'm going to switch through the gears there's no shift detection so as you shift it's, it's best to sort of ease off a little bit um, and give that motor some time to respond so you're not mashing the chain and um, maybe bending the teeth on the sprockets or the derailleur that's kind of typical. The Shimano mid-drive doesn't have shift detection. Uh, the Broza mid-drive doesn't have shift detection. Bosch does, and actually one of Patagos other bikes um, has shift detection. It's the city commuter mid-drive, uh, Dapu. It's not nearly as refined as this, where you know there's dynamic assistance based on pedal torque. So this is the right decision. It gives you plenty of power, but you, know, you, you just want to handle it with care. So here we go. There we are, we've gotten up to 20 miles per hour and the motor kind of fades out because that's the top assisted speed for a class one electric bike. Also, this bike really stable because of those bigger tires. The 27.5 by 2.8, whoa! And single-handed braking going down a pretty steep, kind of arduous section here. And it's, it's working pretty well. That's one of my big uh, likes on this bike. Oh yeah, complete stop. So I think what I'm gonna do, I mean, this is a little bit steeper. I'm gonna dial it down, go to a lower gear and then ascend this and see, see how the motor works on that. Okay guys, wish me luck. It's pretty steep. I'm in a low gear. We're just gonna give it a go. Oh boy. <laughs> Man, plenty of power. It's more about keeping that front wheel down for me right now and balancing. Um, let's try this one more time. <laughs> oh boy oh boy <laughs> doing it doing it again it's more about balance especially one-handed but it's just amazing i mean there's no way i could climb that without some assistance and i'm definitely feeling those 70 newton meters of torque you can hear the motor changes 
The sound changes a little bit at the higher RPM. There we go. Made it all the way up to the top, one-handed. That's, I'm, I'm proud of myself. <laughs> then here's shifting. This time I'm gonna shift without easing off so you can hear some of the, the mashing. So you hear it, it's like ting, ting. That's really not what you wanna do. Um, I'm not trying to be like hard on their equipment, but I do wanna demonstrate that with this extra power, it's best to pedal up to speed a little and then ease off as you shift. Here's that uphill shot. We got Paul in the distance. <laughs> Sweet. I made it up that whole thing one-handed. Nice. <laughs> okay guys, from here you can see the 34 tooth chain ring. It is narrow wide, so it's gonna grab that chain really well. And then we've got the plastic guide keeps it from bouncing off track when we're going over rough terrain. Really nice rubber slap guard. And then the 11 sprockets in the rear, 11 to 42 teeth, pretty great range, Shimano SLX. And I am going to engage that clutch just to tighten things up a little bit because we're going off road. We're gonna start here on pavement. And I think that's cool because you can hear the motor a little bit better. You won't, you won't get blocked out by the, the trail noise. And then we're gonna transition onto dirt. Let's do it. And I am going to start out in eco, just so you can see what that's like. Then I'll go up to trail and boost. pretty well. I do notice a big difference between eco and trail. I'm staying in trail mostly, trying to extend the range a little bit. Um, the motor just kicks right on. There's kind of this like clunk and then you get high power straight from the start versus like a smoother sort of a fluid start with the Broza S or the Bosch CX when it's in EMTB mode. There's no shift detection on this, but since it's measuring rear wheel speed, pedal cadence, pedal torque, if you just ease off a little bit when you're shifting, that's gonna avoid some of the mashing. So a couple times, I was actually pedaling 21, 22 miles per hour and the motor stopped. So the Shimano E8000 does seem to stop just before 20 miles per hour. That's the class one legal limit in the USA. I was also pedaling really fast at a high RPM pedal stroke rotations per minute. This motor supports up to 120 RPM, which is what the nicer e-mountain bike motors do. And, and that's nice for me, especially I have a sensitive knee I like to spin quickly. And at the higher RPMs, you do hear the motor like kind of whining a little bit more, uh, but you're really close to it. When you're actually up on the bike, it's pretty quiet. So being an air fork, it's relatively lightweight. They have those nice black anodized stanchions. Uh, 140 millimeter travel, pretty nice. There's the lockout right here, compression with like full lock. I just wanted to ride around a little bit so you could see this actuating 
there's a little chart on the left slider that shows like rider weight and then it has suggested pressure psi and there's a little cap on the other side of the crown where you can raise or lower that so it's set up pretty well i've got good travel i'm a relatively lightweight rider so it's a little bit lower pressure So we met this guy on the trail. He's just riding his regular trek. Looks like a carbon fiber mountain bike here. Uh, of course, asked about the electric bikes. We have a friendly conversation. Like, oh, are they allowed? Like, what's the deal? And he was he was interested. So we we're like, give it a try, man. And he's doing it right now. Yeah, he's down there. He's checking it out. So we'll get to talk to him in a second. But he had like, you know, clipless pedals and everything. Um, hopefully, that's not a big issue for him. We were talking about how a lot of times guys who do trail maintenance and stuff will use an electric bike because they can get a little bit further and not have uh, not have to work so hard. Or you can run several trails um, and explore the whole thing. Maybe you're doing some reconnaissance. Wow. What'd you think? That's pretty, that's a beautiful ride. Do you mind being on camera if I'm, oh. I'm doing a little post? No, not at all. It's your first time, right? Absolutely. What did you end up in, the trail? I was cheating too bad so i, I <laughs> you're still it, out of breath I you get a workout boost yeah yeah good yeah nice smooth yeah uh did, did, i don't know what you call the did it the, feel pretty natural going up or what was your well, i guess what was your, your what was going through your head um well i thought it was pretty natural really and yep. you know only really noticed it until I picked it up and flipped my bike around to come back up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, um... Is it, is it what you thought an e-bike would be? Um, I've never ridden one. Um, well, so, if you stop pedaling completely, you're not, you're done, right? It's not like it's... No throttle. ...powering you. Right. Which is kind of cool because... So pedal assist, I guess, is yep. that's the that's whole right. concept. That's yeah, right. yeah. And we 
what do you call the plus tires yeah um i haven't ridden those either because I, I love them what do you think um well yeah i mean it's phenomenal it, yeah it's good good, good, good. ride yeah, glad yeah. you enjoyed it thanks man yeah, it's fun to, to, you know, again, I ride a regular bike all the time because they're lighter than this, but then there are some times where my knee's sensitive or I'm between training and I'm like, cool, yeah, you know, maybe I'm keep up with a more advanced friend, do the climbs and stuff. Yeah, no, I've seen, I've seen you guys or somebody up from the lookouts and I'm going, wow, that guy's really going good. He's, um, <laughs> a lot of endurance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah man. No, it's pretty intuitive i guess yeah. thanks for your feedback yeah thanks nice for hear that. no good luck with with it i i uh, i've seen him around so it's a nice looking bike cool good. cool thanks yeah. man i appreciate that yeah Hey guys, we're getting ready to start again. I just wanted to let you know that when you press the power button, I usually try to do it before I'm on and I'm riding because this does calibrate each time, the torque sensors and stuff. So if you hop on and you're pedaling and then you turn it on, it's like error and you need to stop and stuff. So just keep that in mind. That's part of the sensitivity and the responsiveness of this motor system. Uh, but it's, and thankfully the button's relatively re easy to reach. Sometimes you gotta reach way down. So just a heads up. Yeah. <laughs> hey, bud. This was fun. Thank you so much for taking us to a new spot. It's a beautiful day out here, and I've just had a blast on this thing. I, you know, again, I appreciate um, just that it's a new category for Pedigo in a lot of ways. It, it absolutely is, and we put our heart and souls into this, and uh, we wanted to design something that our our existing Pedigo owners would like, and and maybe perspective and hardcore mountain bikers yeah. may dig, and you know. One of the really cool things about this is uh, one of our founder's daughters had a chance to get out and check this out. And, you know, we didn't really know what to expect, but some of the new technology that's out right now, the plus size tires, the specific geometry we did, mm -hmm. maybe the US style, we're a little bit more yeah, A little bit more upright, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, that all came together and seeing these people go down some trails that were a little difficult. Yeah. First try without any issue is like, you know, that that's something really special. That's really cool. So she had never really been before. She was no, it's like her enough. first time mountain biking. <laughs> yeah. You're like, hey, try this out. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. Like, you sure? And it, she did it, man. It was that's awesome. That's the thing. That, I mean, honestly, when you've got the plus size tires like this, they're really forgiving and stable. Uh, and and Paul, oh, Paul was saying like the US geometry, there's been this trend of like, trail bikes that have a longer stem and you're really bent over this brings it back i'm i'm kind of impressed that you did two sizes too yeah that's definitely a first for us we wanted to expand a little bit we knew that these products are going to be a little bit more serious a different uh customer may be looking at it so we wanted to make it applicable for that and you know who knows what's going to happen in the future i also I, didn't show how this works and people who are like into you know hardcore mountain bikes will understand but the seat post dropper if you push that lever look at this it just drops right down so you know if you're worried about standover height getting on the bike is pretty easy and then of course if you're actually going over jumps like you can bend your knees and then when you want to go and get that full leg extension it just pops right back up i don't know if she got a chance to experiment with that but oh totally you know what's really cool about that is you don't have to stop all the time yeah, um, the yeah. dropper post just makes it so you can keep enjoying and you can keep riding yeah and so it's not out of the question to maybe do 20 miles and maybe a little bit over an hour i mean you can just go out and crank for real for you know this is an interesting review because there are so many use cases for uh, this type of electric bike i find that it's really comfortable but this is also very capable it's relatively lightweight great components i you know it's a serious electric mountain bike but it's being sold by a company that has a reputation for being approachable and fun. Um, so I, th I feel like you got you got both of those here, and uh, I think so. I appreciate I think so. appreciate the time. Uh, as always, I've measured the standover height and stuff. You can see the the top two piers angled down and reinforced for stiffness, but it makes it more approachable. I've measured the length, the width, all those stats, and included all the details I could back at electricbikereview.com. Of course, if you own this or you get to take a test ride at one of the dealers, sound off, share your comments and feedbacks, or back in the forums, and of course, have fun out there, ride safe.